electron transfer. So, in the last lesson, we have described how the cinetics, the final cinetic aim, is to describe the total function between the creation of overpotential, so basically associated with loss of energy and changing in potentials from the equilibrium condition, as a function of how fast we want to proceed our process, and so the current. So basically, what we can do now is imagine the electron transfer, the core of the process, so the real transformation from one oxidized species in a reduced one on the surface of the liquid as the limiting step for the process. So basically this is our aim. We want to solve these functions for each single obstacles, imagine that the obstacles it could be the only one present and only at the end sum each single contribute. Now we want to solve this function, imagine to have only the electron transfer as the limiting step. So the electron transfer, we have described what it is, is the change of electrons due to tunnelings, for instance, on the electron surface, in order to transform this species in this one or the opposite. And we have a certain resistance that is associated with this action. And so we have a specific overpotential. Now, what is important to say here is that when we are dealing with a semi-reactions of reduction or oxidation, when we are at equilibrium, so when we are, no, this is not working, when we are at equilibrium, so when we are in a condition that is an open circuit condition, thermodynamically reversible when the resistance is infinite, we can say that uh, the overpotential are zero because the equilibrium potential that it could be even expressed in this way. This is the equilibrium potentials. Pay attention to don't make confusion with this one that is uh, the standard reductions potential, but this is a potential that is in open circuit conditions, obviously, but in uh, uh, basically in standard condition. This uh, is nothing else uh, than the general potential of reductions in the Nernst equation, regardless uh, the type of pH as in this case. So basically, it's important to say that uh, when we are in open circuit condition and the current is zero, the overpotential is zero. But it's zero, why? It does not mean that nothing is really happening, because something is happening. We have uh, basically the transformations of this species in this one, and this species in this one, even when the current is zero. But what does it mean? If the current is zero, the reactions cannot proceed. But, well, this is not exactly because it's true that we are in equilibrium, but this is a dynamic equilibrium. What does it mean? That we are not able to observe any types of net current, so we have no net current, so the current is zero, but only because the speed in which this species is transformed in this one is exactly the same of the speed concerning the transformations of this species in this one. So we have actually something that is occurring. Some, for instance, chopper in this example, 2 plus, is transformed in this one. But at the same time, with the same speed, this one is transformed in the other one. So the two processes are completely balanced. We are not in a freeze situation. What, something is really happening, but we are in equilibrium, the current is zero, because no one of these two processes is predominant with respect to the other one, are completely and perfectly balanced. And only in the moment in which, for instance, we are connecting this electrode to another one in a battery, or we are applying a certain polarization in an electrolytic cell, we are inducing one of these two reactions. For instance, if you are negatively polarizing this electrode, so we are filling this electrode with electrons, 
we know that what we are doing is increase the Fermi energy. We need to remember the lessons we have described on this point of view. But if we are negatively polarizing, and so we are filling this electron, we are increasing the Fermi energy, so we are increasing the electrons in each single energetics level, and what does it mean is that we are promoting the reduction. And so, obviously we have a certain amount of oxidation, but in this condition, the reaction is more dominant, and the only type of current that we can see is a current due to an anodic process. So, uh, a cathode, uh, um, sorry, a reduction process. Because in this case, the reduction is more dominant, and we can appreciate a real current. So, we have a completely balancing. We are polarizing negatively in order to improve promote the reduction, and what's happening is that the reduction starts to become more important with respect to the oxidation, so that we can appreciate a real current, that in this case is a current due to a reduction process, a reduction process obviously on this electrode, on the other one, the hypothetical other one, electrode coupled with this one, it will be an oxidation, obviously, because if from one side we have a reduction, from the other we have an oxidation. Uh, but obviously now we are referring on the potentials of one electrode. So obviously the opposite, if we are polarizing positively, so we are removing electrons, we are inducing a positive polarization, poly, uh, polarization with a potentiometer, with this machine. In this case we are promoting the oxidation, um, the oxi yes, the oxidation, we are promoting the oxidation. And so, uh, obviously, we can appreciate a real net current, but again, this current is due to this reaction, and not to this one. Obviously, this, maybe it's present, but in a really small amount, we respect this one, it is proceeding faster, since we have polarized positively the electron order to induce this reaction. And so, the dynamic equilibrium is broken, and we can appreciate a real current that is not zero. And the current, if, if the current is not zero, the energy loss and the entropics contribute pay to the universe increase, and so we can appreciate overtension. So, the, the meaning of the overtension, for instance, is extremely important, and we will see even in battery. And it's important in order to understand in which way the DDP of a battery as lithium ion battery can decrease during the working and basically or in general is important in order to understand that basically why the real potential that we have in battery is different from the theoretical one. So we have this condition. Now uh, I want to uh, explain the resolutions of these functions for a more precise way. So Let's imagine to consider this equilibrium, so these situations, imagine to be in equilibrium, in a perfect equilibrium. So if we are in a perfect equilibrium, our potential is the equilibrium potential, the overtensions are zero and the current is zero. And imagine to describe this from an energetic, this reaction in a perfect equilibrium, in a perfect dynamic equilibrium, from an energetic point of view. So we have some reagent and some product in these directions, or this reagent and this product in the opposite. So let's design here a diagram in which we have here the free energy. And here, the coordinate of reactions, for instance, of reaction. So here we have this species from this, this reagent, the oxygen, for instance, and the electrons, and a potential barrier, and we have here the reduced. So basically, we can say even if we want to compose this in two parts, we can say that from an energetic point of view, if we have a perfect equilibrium, the energetic level of the free energy of Gibbs, it will be exactly the same. So this situation is associated with the same energy of this situation, and we have the same activation energy. So dg, uh, for instance, uh, 
for the reduction and the G for the oxidation. So the energy of this reagent is equal to the energy of this reagent. So we, we, we do not want any type of uh, behavior leading to the formations of uh, a situation that is more comfortable because here no more comfortable situations are present since the energy is equal and this is when we are in this situation but in this situation we know that uh, no real current is flowing and so even if we have no energy lost okay <laughs> the maximum work the, the, the useful work is maximum but is useless since we are not actually really running the reaction and so if we want to run the reaction and we want to speed up the process, we can do this. And basically, in electrochemistry, what we can do is move the line, is move this energetic line. Why? Because if you are imagining, for instance, to, as previously done, to polarize positively the electrode, if we are polarizing positively our electrode, so we are inducing the presence of positive charge with a potentiometer so promoting the flowing of the electrons in these directions obviously all these electrons are, pro are going to another electrode that is negatively polarized always the electrode that should be maintained but now we are focusing on one single electron so we are investigating these functions for one single electron well if we are positively polarizing this electrode we are promoting this reaction the oxidation because we are decreasing the Fermi energy and so and electrons from the highest occupied molecular orbital pass from this species to this one and so we have a following pathway of the electrons toward the oxidation toward the loss of one electrons so obviously this concept is really clear in a specific dedicated lesson uh, it's important to know about this in order to understand this concept but what is important now is that if we are positively polarizing this electrode we are moving this line so we are decreasing the energy of the oxidized species as a product because if the oxidation is promoted this means that from an energetic point of view the energy of the oxidized species it will be smaller with respect to this one and so spontaneously the system that always try to reach smaller energy tend to follow this direction since here the activation energy in order to complete this pathway is smaller with respect to the activation energy in order to complete this pathway so if you want to design this in this way in this way we can say that uh, jump this obstacle, so passing from this to this, uh, is more easily to jump these obstacles. And so, polarizing positively, we are decreasing the free energy of this species as a product, because we are promoting the oxidation. And obviously the opposite uh, if we are polarizing negatively. If you are polarizing negatively, these still remain the same and we are decreasing the red line. This is the tricks of electrochemistry. In electrochemistry, or coupling one electrode with another, or just polarizing with a potentiometer, we are able to change the dynamic equilibrium in order to promote one reaction or the other one. But obviously, more strongly we are promoting the death reactions, it means that we are running a more important current, and more important uh, it will be the energy losses, and so the overtension. Now, it's, I've said previously that uh, um, basically uh, the, the current can be seen as something that describes the speed of the process. But how it's possible? What does it mean? Well, if we remember, for instance, the different types of equations from the simplest uh, physical chemistry base the concept, we know that uh, the rate constant uh, it could be described, rate constant of a reaction it could be described or due to the Ehring equation, the Hiving equation so K for K for H KB for T on H exponential the complex activation energy over RT or the Arrhenius equation, so the rate constant 
is equal to A minus Activation's energy over RT. So basically, here we have two different types of equations. In order to describe the rate constant for a certain reaction, based on different models, the collision theory and uh, the transition state theory. So basically it doesn't matter, but this is important and it will be important, especially the A-ring equation, in order to develop the battle volume. The battle volume equations is basically the final resolutions of these functions for the electron transfer. We will see this in a moment. So now let's focus our attention on the relationship between the variations of the free energy and the rate constant in the earring theory. Earring theory. And uh, now what is important to say here is that this rate constant is, can be connected on the current. What does it mean? So the current is equal to the rate constant per the concentrations of the surface of the species involved. So let me write it as so okay current so ampere is equal to rate constant the one that is computable from the earring theory for the constitutions of the surface of the species, for the ratio between the model of the electrons and the model of substances, for the Faraday constant for the surface area. Let's check. This is centimeter square. This is column over mole of electrons, the Faraday constant. This is mole of electrons over, I'm looking about a unit of measure, over mole of substances. The surface concentration is mole of substances over centimeter square. We have this elimination, this elimination, this elimination, this, this, and this. And we have the rate constant is second and minus one. And But we know that basically we have here still remaining a column for second and minus one. But column for second and minus one is equal to ampere and is a unit of current. So we can appreciate how basically exists a clear and linear relationship between the rate constant and the current, and so this is the reason for which a current it could be described as something that is able to characterize how much faster our reactions is proceed. But it's quite logical, because if the reactions proceed faster, we are expecting that the current it will be faster, because we have more generations of electron in the same time. Okay, so now what we can do is taking consider about this, is look at this plot again. So we are imagining to promote, one moment for some water, we are imagining to promote, uh, for instance, the oxidation. We are positively polarizing the electrode and we want to promote the oxidation. What is happening is that we are passing from this starting energetics level to another one. And since the energetic level, we know this very well from thermodynamic, it could be connected with the electric potential in this way. We know this extremely well. And knowing that this is also equal to this, we can say that difference, this difference in the, the free energy is equal to, imagine that m is equal to 1, in order to simplify the computing. So in this case, it's not equal to 1, in this case it's equal to 2, but now we are imagining to consider m is equal to 1 in order to simplify. For instance, there in, it could be uh, any classical reaction, for instance, uh, vanadium maybe reduction uh, and so on, in which basically for each single mole of reagent we have one mole of electrons exchange. It's just in order to simplify it, we have E minus is zero. And so this, if we want to 
to make this picture more clear, we can use a straight line with respect curve, but it's basically the same thing. So we have our starting point here, so this, and we have our starting point here, this. Obviously, at the very beginning, the energetics level are equal. It's so no net flux of current since we're not uh, basically uh, creating a more suitable situation. But if we positively polarizing, we are decreasing the free energy from G0 to G, and we are obtaining a situation that is more favorable for an oxidation and a real net current occurs. Well, now it's more clear to say that the difference between this G and G0 and the new G could be connected to a difference between E and E0. Why? Because basically uh, we have these relationships. And uh, proceeding with this uh, difference, we can say that the difference between the starting point and the other starting point, so delta G, is equal, in according with this true equation, to F E minus E0. But this difference, it could be described as composed of two contributes, this one and this one. What does it mean? That if from one, we have basically this changing, but if we are, in order to understand better this concept, let's imagine that uh, this is the free energy and this is the coordinate of reaction and this is uh, the redu reduced product and this is the oxidized. If we are decreasing the energy of the oxidation, in reality we are, from a point of view, decreasing the energy of the product. But from the other point of view, we are decreasing the energetics barrier, passing from this situation to this situation. So basically we can say that this changing is in the reality a com composed of a decrease in the free energy of the product and an increase in the free energy of the reagents, or better, a decrease in the activation energy, in the energetics barrier. And so we can say that this is just the sum of two components. And this component is equal to alpha, alpha, a, this, and this is obviously 1 minus, where alpha, that is the symmetry factor, symmetry, symmetric coefficient, or also known as electron transfer coefficient, is important because allows us to quantify how much this effect is pronunciated in these directions or in this one. Because if, for instance, this value is higher, we have something like this, and maybe this is quite limited. But if alpha is quite low, we have the opposite. We have something like this. And so it's important to remember how basically the difference between the sorting conditions and the final one, uh, that it could be connected in according with the thermodynamic with the potential, is uh, further, could be further subdivided within this contribute and this contribute. So, knowing this, basically, what we can say is that uh, this is equal to this and plus this. But why is so important? Because basically what is important is that now we are able to collect this iron theory and know about the iron theory. Let me cancel here. We know that the rate constant of, for instance, uh, the oxidation, the reactions that proceeding toward the oxidation, it could be described in which way? Well, basically, we know that this is equal to 
kb for t for h exponential minus the free energy of activation r2 but now if we are looking at this reaction the free energy of activation is uh, reduced why is reduced? because it's reduced with a this amount because we have increased this portion and so we can say that the rate constant is equal now to kb ht e and this is minus this minus alpha f e is zero or we can make this over rt why? why this? because now the activation's energy is not anymore this one but it's smaller because uh, during the polarization we have uh, uh, basically decreased the potential barrier of this point so if the starting potential barrier was this one in order in which we are creating this difference in energy this difference I have described before is due to a decrease in the energy of the product and an increase in the energy of the reagent but this is associated with what? is associated with basically with a decrease in the in the activation energy and so at the very beginning we have this activation energy but later we have the activation energy that is this one but is this one what is? is the 31 minus this contribute and so we have decreased the activation energy and if we want to the same for instance from the other reaction so we imagine to follow the, if this, because this is a rate constant it is basically maybe kf that is the one that is proceed in this direction so kf so from reduction to oxi oxidation and here is promoted because here in this case we have positively polarized and for the reason the activation energy is reduced in fact we have a smaller activation energy a smaller barrier in this case but if we want to try to design the same equations for the opposite so kb for instance the rate constant kb for this process in the in always again always in positive polarization conditions but in positive polarization condition this reaction is not promoted the reductions is not promoted fact we have that in this case the activation constant is the starting one plus one contribute that is this one so the way in which this is decreased it represents also the way in which the energetics barrier is increased if we want to proceed in this direction and so now the activation energy is even higher and so it's important because we can say that when we are positively polarizing the electron in order to promote the oxidation the activation energy of the oxidation decreases we need to sum a negative uh, terms on this whereas the opposite is less promoted is not promoted the reduction because we are positively polarizing the electrode and in fact the activation energy increase as in according on what we are doing on this plot and if we are now able to collect these two terms because we need also to remember that the total rate constant uh, or in general the total rate constant is the sum of these two contribute because obviously we have discussed previously that in a dynamic equilibrium always we have even the presence of the other reactions but if we are polarizing the electrode the reaction is not promoted is not visible because is basically present in a really really pure way but it's present and its presence can modify the way in which the reaction proceed and the over potential what does it mean that if we want to observe the total net current 
the total net current of a process in which we are positively polarizing, obviously this is also true for a negative polarization, it's just an example, is the sum of this contribute, we can call it Kf, plus this contribute. And so what does it mean? That collecting some terms that are equal, we can appreciate that the net current is equal to Kb4th elevated at minus this Rt, but this is uh, uh, basically a current because uh, uh, is um, is associated with a current, and basically it's equal to the exchange current, the exchange current density, but we will see this later. What is important is that here we have this contribute, minus this contribute. Obviously here n is not present since before this and before this cause we have assumed equal to 1 and the difference between the actual real potential and uh, the equilibrium potential is as definition the overtension. And so what we have created? We have created a final function of the current in a function of the overpotential. That is basically just this one, because it's the same thing. So we have basically created a real function, we have solved the real functions defining what is the behavior of uh, um, the overpotentials created by increasing the current, taking consider of the exchange current. It is a parameter that we will see is able to quantify how intrinsically fast is the reaction. So it quantifies basically the behavior of the chemical use uh, because different types of uh, chemicals can have quite different types of behavior, and this is also quantified in this parameter, the taking consider about the starting energy and so on, and uh, and basically this one. This term is taken as positive and this is taken as negative, but it's just a convention. And uh, what this plot tell us? This equation is known as butler volmer equation, and it will be extremely more clear in the moment in which we want to plot this in the very well-known overpotential versus current diagram. So now let's make and let's solve this butler volmer equation from an analytical point of view, trying to describe the meaning of this equation. Right here again the Butler Volmer. So exchange current exponential uh, this one over RT minus minus one minus this. Okay, the Butler Volmer. If we draw here a plot. Um, okay, current, current density and uh, over potential the current is taken, it will be taken as even positive or even negative, just as convention because here we have a contribute due to, for instance, uh, the, the proceeding of the oxidation and so an anodic current 
because this contribute is associated with the development of the reaction toward the oxidation, and this is, in the, from the other hand, uh, associated with the development of the opposite reactions, reasons for which we have amino signs, because one current tries to fight the other one, since are referring to opposite reaction, and this is the cathodic current. So it's just a matter of convention, we can choose uh, which is the positive and which is the negative. So in this case, I'm selecting positive, the anodic current, and the negative, this one. So, we are promoting uh, a positive polarization, and so the positive polarization is here, and the negative polarization is here. This is the overall potential, and this is the current, positive of the negative. What is important to say here is that if we want to plot this two function, this function, we have a contributor due to this. It is something like this. We have a contribute due to this. That is something like this. So if we are imagining to make the other one negligible. And so the final total plot is this one. What does it mean? That when we are increasing the polarization, for instance in this case we are positively polarizing the electrode. Positively polarizing the electrode, we are promoting the oxidations, and so we are increasing these types of uh, current. So we are promoting, for instance, uh, this uh, reaction in this direction, so a positive polarization. And uh, what is happening is that this increase in the terms of current, and uh, this decrease. But at the same time, uh, here, we do not have a linear profile as a line. We have these types of profile because even if the reaction is proceeding in this direction, the only existence of the other possibility can a little bit modify the analytical profile. And so we do not have something like this, but we have this shape because even if we are promoting a reaction at low current, we are filling the possible existence of the other reaction. It is not uh, visible, but is present. And this presence, in a small way, we respect the one that we are promoting. And what is the rule of the exchange current? Well, the exchange current basically tells us uh, what, how much uh, intrinsically fast is our reaction. Because, uh, you know, so what does it mean? So, let's. Uh, define what is the exchange current. 